So your fermentation has stopped, but you're pretty sure it wasn't quite done yet. Let's see if we can fix it. A stuck fermentation, also called a stalled fermentation, is when your yeast give out before fermentation has finished, meaning you still have fermentable sugars in your must or in your wort, except the yeast can't get them. Signs of a stalled fermentation are pretty apparent. There's no bubbles bubbling in your airlock. Your hydrometer is reading the same reading day after day, but you can see that there's still sugars in there. And of course, it still tastes sweet when you know that it shouldn't. Unfinished brews do carry some risk too. If the ABV is under about 3% alcohol, that can lead to dangerous bacterial spoilage that can poison you. And of course, if your brewing yeast has stopped, that doesn't stop bacteria and wild yeast from continuing the fermentation if they get in there and that can lead to off flavors, souring, and just general weirdness in your brew that you never intended. But of course, the biggest risk is bottle bombs. If you put a stalled fermentation into sealed bottles, whether it's flip tops, corks, or caps, and that fermentation kicks back off, you can risk bottle bombs, which means there's so much pressure building up from the fermentation inside the bottle that the bottle can literally explode, sending shards of glass everywhere. Super dangerous. You don't want that. Now, there are two sort of camps of stalled fermentation. There are those that happen in mead cider and wine, and there are those that generally happen in beer. And today, we're going to talk about both. So first, let's look at just some general causes of why a fermentation might stall out. There's low yeast health. Maybe your yeast packet was old, or you didn't pitch enough yeast, or there was some kind of nutrient deficiency. There's also poor fermentation environment. Maybe the temperature is too hot, too cold, or you're getting rapid swings in temperature. Or there might be high gravity stress, AKA osmotic pressure, meaning that there's too much sugar or too much alcohol in your brew, and so your yeast can't do the work. Lastly, oxygen or nutrient depletion mid-fermentation. Maybe there's not enough oxygen or assimilable nitrogen in your must or your wort for the yeast to continue fermentation, so they're just giving out halfway through. So now that you know kind of the most common causes of a stalled ferment, let's take a look more specifically first at mead, wine, and cider. There are three things that you're gonna to need to check out to make sure that your brew is actually stalled. And the first of those is hydrometer readings. Now, a mead wine or cider is generally gonna stop around 1.000 or lower on your hydrometer. Now, there are special cases where it might stop a little higher, but generally you're planning for that result. So if it has stalled out somewhere at 1.010 or higher, then there's a case to be made that it might legitimately be stalled out. And so you want to check the hydrometer multiple times over the course of a week to see if it has moved at all during that time. If it hasn't, you've got a stall. Next is temperature. You want to make sure that you're fermenting within the temperature band that your yeast likes to ferment in. If the temperature range is 62 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit, and you're trying to ferment at 50 degrees or 95 degrees, you may be outside the range of temperatures that the yeast can handle. And now, a lot of times too hot only leads to off flavors and weirdness in your brew, not necessarily a stall, but there are some yeasts susceptible to higher temperatures, and so it's worth noting. Cold temperature basically universally puts the yeast kind of to sleep in your brew. And lastly, nutrition. You want to make sure there's enough nitrogen for the yeast, especially if you're starting with a high original gravity, because just like you, your yeast need a balanced diet of vitamins and minerals in addition to sugars and other things that you enjoy eating. So did you use nutrient? If not, that might be the problem. Did you calculate your nutrient using a tool like meadtools.com to make sure that you're putting the right amount of nutrient in for the potential ABV and the nutrient requirements of your yeast? If your hydrometer reading is consistent and unusually high, if your temperature is right, and if you provided the right amount of nutrient for your yeast, then it seems like maybe you legitimately have a stalled fermentation. So let's take a look at some fixes. 
The first thing we recommend is gentle agitation. Rouse that lees from the bottom of the fermenter with a sanitized spoon or other implement to get that yeast up and moving around. There's good stuff in that lees, like healthy active yeast and dead yeast, which can act as nutrient for those healthy yeast. So sometimes just swirling it around and they're getting it up off the bottom can help get fermentation going again. Of course, you also wanna make sure to check your temperature to make sure you're fermenting at the right temp for your yeast. And if you are, but you're in the low range for that yeast, try bumping it up closer to the higher range, even if you gotta wrap it in a blanket and stick it by a vent. Just getting it a little bit warmer might help. And then just a little bit of organic nutrient might help also. You don't necessarily wanna use a nutrient that includes inorganic nitrogen, like Fermaid K or diammonium phosphate because that inorganic nitrogen can't be used by yeast at certain alcohol levels. It's kind of complicated, but basically a lot of yeast can't use inorganic nitrogen past 9% ABV. And so you want to be careful to only include organic nitrogen if you're making a small nutrient addition, because the last thing you want is inorganic nitrogen sitting around in your brew, making it taste kind of like ammonia. So just a small nutrient addition, maybe a gram, gram and a half of Fermato per gallon of wine, meat, or cider might be enough to kind of help kickstart it and get it going again. And of course, there's the remedying power of yeast hulls. A lot of people sell yeast hulls as a nutrient. A lot of people say that yeast hulls are a nutrient. Turns out that the assimilable nitrogen in yeast hulls is pretty low, but what they are good at is absorbing the toxic byproducts of fermentation. They absorb it, they lock it away, and so the yeast aren't coming up against those toxins while they're trying to finish fermentation. So adding some yeast hulls, just following the package instructions, might soak up enough toxins that your yeast can kind of get over that hump and start fermenting again. If none of this works, it's time to repitch some yeast. And for that, we recommend a high-powered yeast like EC1118 or Uvafirm 43. Uvafirm 43 has kind of emerged as the go-to yeast for restarting a stuck fermentation, and it's now the one I recommend. And surprise, Craft Brew now sells it in individual portions, so you can now buy a packet of Uvafirm 43 if you need it to get that fermentation unstuck. Now it's advised to make a yeast starter with Uvafirm 43. You want to use GoFirm or another yeast rehydrating nutrient to rehydrate the yeast so it's sucking in a bunch of vitamins and minerals into its cell walls before it goes into your must. And then ideally you'll temper that yeast starter with some of your must, putting a little bit in over the course of an hour or so until you've filled up that jar. So that way your yeast are better activated to what it is they're going to be fermenting before you dump that whole yeast starter into your carboy. So if all of that fails, you can dilute with some spring water and see if diluting the ABV and the sugars will get fermentation regoing. It's not ideal. Or you can blend. You can take that mead, that wine, that cider, put it away for a long time until it clears out, and then rack it over and blend it with something that is dry in hopes that it kind of moderates the sweetness. It's not fun to have to dilute or blend your brew, something that you've worked hard on and planned for and wrote a recipe for. But if you're determined to save that batch, blending or dilution are your last resort options. Unlike mead, wine, or cider, beer generally stops well shy of dry, usually at 1.01, 1.015. So there will be some sweetness remaining in almost every beer style unless you're aiming for something that is really, really dry and you're using special techniques to get there. Generally, there are going to be some non-fermentable sugars left in a beer, and that is fine and expected. So if your beer has stopped at 1.015, it might just be done. Your yeast might just have fermented all the sugars that they can cut through. Of course, just like mead, wine, and cider, you want to check the temperature to make sure you're operating within the temperature band of your yeast, especially if it's a specialty yeast like a lager yeast or a kvaik yeast. You want to make sure that you're working within the constraints of the yeast that you've chosen. But the real reason a lot of beers stall out is attenuation problems. If you look on your yeast packet, you'll see a percentage attenuation, and that's based on the average beer that it's going to go into, the makeup of complex and simple sugars inside that beer, and what kind of sugars that yeast can eat. The reason you might have too much sweetness left over in your beer is you might have too many non-fermentable sugars in there, sugars that the yeast can't get through. And generally that happens when you are doing an all grain beer and your mash temperature was too high. Essentially you didn't get the enzymatic activity that you need to convert the starches in the grain 
into proper sugars or convert them completely. And so the yeast can't get at them. And so they just stay in the beer and leave it sweet. I personally have done a beer where I thought 170 degrees was a good temperature for a mash. And I ended up with a sickly sweet beer on the other end because the yeast just couldn't chew through it all. This is not really a big problem in extract beers. This generally only applies to all grain beers because you are doing the conversion of starches to sugars yourself. In an extract beer, the majority of your fermentable sugars are coming from malt extract that has already been converted into sugars. So if you've got an extract beer that stopped way too sweet, you want to check some of the other things on this list, primarily temperature and yeast health. Just like mead, wine, or cider, you want to check some of the simple things first, like rousing the yeast. You want to get that yeast up off the bottom and see if that helps. And temperature. You want to make sure you're operating within the yeast's preferred temperature range. And of course, yeast health. Maybe that yeast packet was bad. Maybe it was old. Maybe it got some kind of contaminant in it. And so pitching just a fresh, right off the shelf packet of yeast might be all you need to do to restart that beer fermentation. Now, if your stall comes from the composition of your wort, say there's too many non-fermentable sugars in there, you're gonna have to get a little sciency. Fortunately, there are off the shelf enzymes that can help you out. The enzyme glucoamylase works at room temperature, and so you can put a little bit of glucoamylase into your under-attenuated beer, and it will slowly convert those complex sugars into sugars that the yeast can usually eat. And so that may be what you need. You may need to add a little glucoamylase enzyme to get in there and break those starches and complex sugars down into something that is more digestible for your yeast. Now, this may lead to a beer that's significantly drier than you're looking for, but at least it won't be cloying. Avoiding stalled fermentations is textbook easy. Maybe it's not necessarily always easy in practice, but here's your checklist for what to look for. Pitch enough fresh, healthy yeast. Make sure to oxygenate your brew well at the start of fermentation. Maintain consistent fermentation temps within the range that your yeast prefers. For mead, wine, and cider, you're going to want to stagger nutrient additions for higher ABV to make sure they have enough nutrient to do the job. And lastly, make sure you're using the appropriate yeast strain for the gravity level and sugar source that you're fermenting. You want to use beer yeast for beer and wine yeast for wine. Now, sometimes a stuck fermentation is just a really, really slow fermentation. And so you really do want to check your hydrometer readings over the course of time to make sure that that stall is really stuck. And following this video, you should have some steps you can take to unstick that stall. But of course, the greatest tool in your arsenal is going to be preparation, making sure you got plenty of nutrient on hand, making sure you have a way of managing the fermentation temperature of your brew, having some Uva Firm 43 or EC1118 yeast on hand to make sure that you've got a yeast ready to go to pitch into a stalled fermentation and you're not waiting on shipping times or having some glucoamylase enzyme on hand in case you get one of those stuck beers. Of course, a lot of the things we discussed in this video are available at craftbrew.com, so check out our website for homebrewing supplies. And do you have other opinions or ideas on unsticking stalled fermentation? Drop a comment down below and let us know. As always, make sure you're subscribed to our Craft Brew YouTube channel and check us out on social media. You don't want to miss any upcoming content from us here at Craft Brew. We've got a lot of fun stuff planned, as you can probably imagine. I'm BC here for Craft Brew, and until next time, I hope you've got good things brewing.